that he is uh, good to, I don't care about that either. Uh, and that can go as well. That is some devices, cool. There's no further ado, that's going to be slightly more tedious. Um, IoT, yes. It's a bit like mobile development, but just quite different. Um, so anybody is dabbling with that yet already, IoT? No? Well, um, that's... Uh, that is not the easiest way to start. I'm just going to be quite honest. <laughs> but it depends. If you like C, it, it might be. Anybody like C? One person. <laughs> this guy likes C. <laughs> if, you, if you need to do some C stuff, like IoT development with Azure yeah, Sphere, call that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me take a picture. Right. Um, so, um, I'm just going to do another quick ellipsis. There is um, a project from Examarine, a uh, dude called uh, Brian Kostanich. Yes, uh, that is called. Uh, so they are called. Uh, they are called what? Uh, wilderness Labs. And uh, what they did is, uh, first of all, they just kind of bought uh, Netduino, which is Arduino with .NET, uh, very nice. And then they just released kind of really right now uh, some field called uh, Meadow that is just like MCU, so a, mi a microcontroller unit, which is just basically not a microprocessor because microprocessors just do a lot of things that you don't necessarily want need. It's just like a smaller thing that just is going to be running some uh, smaller tasks and uh, require less resources, and therefore you can run battery on it. Anyways, the point is, uh, with that thing, they created a kind of a small OS-ish thing that is running .NET Core. And you can actually code IoT directly on .NET Core uh, with a really nice interface that just did all the heavy lifting. You don't really need to know that much about the device you're going to develop against. It's kind of plug and play-ish. Uh, so uh, have a look at that. I'm going to make two sessions about this thing. I'm getting my kids uh, next month, five of them. So I'll do like a like a session. That thing is going to be fun. And all done that core, no C, no C at all, zero. Right. And then <coughs> IoT security. So uh, anybody knows about IoT security? At least the bad things, right? There have been a couple of bad things. So uh, it's starting like that. So uh, IoT. Yeah. The first device I, I had was a kind of rabbit thing that is going to tilt uh, its ear and just like uh, get blue, let's say if it's raining or whatever, was basically connected to the uh, metro services and do, uh, yeah, but basically just like move about and uh, do some color thing whenever that happened. That, that's not very dangerous. But then you've got like baby uh, cameras. So anybody's got some babies? No? Yes? One? Excellent. So uh, the problem with baby cameras is at the time the manufacturer they don't really care much about security. And therefore you've got a password that is going to be password on the password, you know, on the uh, Linux operating system that was probably running. And, and uh, the admin password, uh, like username, would have been admin uh, as well. So uh, because they're connected, uh, a lot of uh, nasty uh, folks went there said, cool, I'm just going to use those cameras to uh, maybe spy on people and be creepy or just to use it as some devices that are going to spend, uh, send some spam or just like, get into the US uh, Department of Defense for some reason uh, that we don't know about uh, and get some email server, uh, whatever. Uh, that, that, that was pretty nasty. Nobody cared about security. And security is super important with IoT. Another example, so that was just like bad, but didn't cost much to the economy. Just probably freaked out a couple of people. Now, uh, traffic lights. That's a baby crying. Uh, I just forgot to press my thing. Traffic lights, they're great. Um, so a couple of countries started just to, uh, uh, start, uh, to get some IoT-driven uh, traffic system because when you think about it, uh, it would be kind of uh, useful to uh, not have to uh, dig roads every five minutes in order to uh, do some uh, provide the connectivity that the system needs. Uh, so the problem is like quite quite early. Um, they, they when they started to do of these systems in the major city over the world, uh, they didn't really think about how to actually update the devices, the firmware, the software that you put on it, and ultimately um, the devices that were basically dug underground in order to power uh, those, uh, those systems uh, I, I got hacked, uh, so therefore uh, people just like did some crazy thing with traffic. The problem is in order to solve that, uh, they needed to actually access the device because they didn't think about this uh, over the air um, updates and, and, and whatever. So you had to actually dig these devices out and update them one by one. And, and that was extremely, extremely costly. Uh, so that was just like not a good thing to do. So hackable, and on top of that, you just cannot update it because of security um, yeah, vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities that have been found, and so on and so on. So not great. Uh, cost a lot of money, and there you go. So. 
Azure Sphere, what is it? Well, that is just addressing the security. So we've got like about 12 uh, S's in, in uh, Azure Sphere and security, which is number one security, number two security, number three security, number four security, number five security, until 12, just like super secure. Um, and um, <coughs> uh, it's just like because I could see that the future is going to be more and more IoT connected, and if we don't do anything about it, that is going to be like rather quite bad. So we've got to make sure that you've got something, think about it properly, look at just all the moving parts, and make sure you just address something that is super secure. Because we're like currently now we've got light bulbs, we've got Alexa, fitness trackers, uh, you've got like a kids' toys as well, right? You don't want like a, like a, cr a crazy person going around and just start hacking your kids' toys and say, ah, I'm going to eat you or something like that, and then nightmare until the end of the world, and then just a person, who, uh, it's, it's bad, it's bad. So let's not go there. So um, the problem is just developers don't necessarily know that much about security. So we've got like now DevSecs, uh, DevSecs, DevSecOps that is getting quite popular uh, those days. But I suppose that to most of you that just is a world that looks good, but you actually don't have that implementation in your company because uh, developers are busy and they, you need to know more and more about literally everything. Like the thing that we talked about 10 years ago, the thing I'm talking about now, the thing, <laughs> la, la, la. so no. <coughs> So it's kind of good if you get somebody else to think about it, such as our good friend, well, like Microsoft, it must be a logo somewhere. Uh, yeah, somewhere, Microsoft. So, so they, they did that, and the result is, I've got quite a few of these. That thing, uh, that's an Azure Sphere, like the first one that came up, uh, like in collaboration with um, Seed Studio. Uh, the important bit, that, that is just like a dev board, right? The important bit is just like the little MCU that is in the middle, which is something that's got like a 10, 10 years, I believe, uh, lifetime that, uh, of support. That means that Microsoft is going to take care and make sure it's updated all the time, so you don't get into a situation where uh, some evil hacker are going to put a new evil a kind of trojan uh, or like a virus. Um, they will be able, Microsoft, to take care of it and update your device without you having to do nothing about it. Which is fantastic. And does quite a lot of other things. So, a bit of water. So it's good. This. So we've got a couple of those that are available. Uh, they created a mini one that's got like uh, less things. Uh, and you uh, currently have also, like a, an another one that just came a couple of months ago, that will have different kind of ports to allow even easier plug and play. Um, uh, I'll show that, that. The thing is, just like as you can see, you've got like all your like serial ports and all just kind of uh, different uh, I/O, like a GPU and all, all that that is kind of packed in into the board. But it's not very useful because you've got like quite a lot of pins, right? This is why you need to get a nice little hat like that. Uh, that will allow you to be able to actually plug some devices. So that's the board itself. By itself, it's got, again, it's just like a development board, right? It's just to say, oh, cool, that works. You've got some buttons, uh, you've got some light that blinks, but then you can just like uh, augment that with that guy there, uh, if I put it correctly. Uh, it's just a hat, and uh, then that will just give you like a couple of more ports to play with in order to be able to plug candies. That's a box of candies. Uh, uh, what have we got? So that would be what kind of candy have we got here? That is, so that's how, how we connect it, right? You just like plug it inside, and then uh, that is going to be just a normal LED. Uh, what have we got here? It's just not part of the script, but I'm doing it anyways because I don't follow scripts. Uh, that would be like a little uh, speaker, so it's going to buzz around and do some things. We've got some, uh, oh no. this one is cool. Oh yeah. Uh, that is a little uh, LCD screen. Uh, so you can just like, connect it again and just draw some things with it. And you can get, get some e-paper, you can get some accelerometer, you can get like, literally, uh, I think for this device here, you can plug about 250 type of uh, little things like that. Uh, with the newer version they released like a few months ago, it's about 700 uh, different kind of uh, IoT toys. You can get, um, that you need to order that from Microsoft, but all those little devices there, where well you can use Seed Studio. Also, I've got like, if you go to Simlin Tower, you've got a lot of toys there. It's a good place, very good place. <coughs> right, back to the script. Um, la, 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 la. So Microsoft basically just thought about it and said, hey, here we go, we have something, support it for 10 years, we're going to take care of all the things that can be bad, don't do a single thing, and, uh, and that is right. <coughs> okay, oh, uh, fun fact, Thirsty. Fun fact, I am very thirsty. That's a fun fact. Very fun. Um, the uh, security kind of uh, 
uh, knowledge they uh, applied to this thing comes from uh, the Xbox peripheral. So that's the Xbox team, when they're just starting to plug and play some devices, they said, right, we need to make it secure, and they applied this knowledge to uh, Azure Sphere. It took about like 10 years to think about it properly. So it's not like, oh, let's make something out of the blue. It's just like a really well thought of project. And it's running, uh, it's not the device only by itself, it's an MCU. <coughs> that is also a operating system, which is the first uh, Linux based operating system that Microsoft actually released with a custom kernel and all that. So it's nice and fun. <sighs> Three main components. First of all, hardware. First of all, hardware, uh, which is uh, what I showed you, right? Uh, um, Microsoft needs to certify this hardware in order to be able just to be eligible. So it's not like any OEM that's going to say, yes, we're going to do a device with that. No, no. Microsoft is just going to look around and make sure that it's, uh, it's proper. Same for the chips, right? Ultimately, that is just anybody could do a, a chip architectured with uh, their, uh, their specification, but still uh, it needs to be just, again, just uh, uh, stamped uh, three times at least by Microsoft. So MCU, right? Uh, Microcontroller. Uh, uh, unit. Nobody is uh, familiar with that. That's a little uh, square of plastic whistle. So uh, I, um, then we've got like the, uh, again, as you said, OIS, which is the um, um, custom uh, Linux distribution that Microsoft uh, did. And uh, then uh, you've got like uh, the Azure Sphere security service, which is uh, on the Azure portal uh, that would be <coughs> um, providing basically the authentication. So we're not in username and password uh, land here. It's just like all end-to-end uh, -end, uh, encryption with certificates, right? So to make sure that it's not really hackable or quite, quite a kind of hard. We'll see when compute, uh, quantum, computer, uh, com quantum computing will happen. It might just change, but for now we're good. Uh, and uh, that will also um, provide the um, failure reporting. So if anything goes wrong, that will go to the service and you'll be able just to know about it. <coughs> there you go. Guaranteed 10 years again. Services. So you've got the, uh, <coughs> that's the MCU. Ultimately, you've got multiple MCU on this architecture, but uh, well, let, let's call it as such, right? So um, you've got first of all the Microsoft Pluton, that is the security system. That is a bit that is basically uh, taking care of all the heavy, uh, heavy lifting to make sure that everything um, uh, remains se uh, secure. Then you've got <coughs> the um, Cortex A that is going to be running the operating system, so the custom Linux kernel, with your uh, application that you are going to deploy usually over the air using like uh, IoT Hub or whatever. That's going to be there, so that is just like nice and containerized. And uh, the Cortex-M here is going to be for real-time processing. Uh, so for instance, using apps for referrals, uh, internet access, and so on and so on. Uh, the blue bit here is uh, pretty much treat every of those subsystems as if they were basically already compromised. So that by, by default, basically, everything is compromised. It's not, but it's treated as such. So you won't be able to propagate basically any threat from uh, from one subsystem to the other. That's the idea, just like nice and compartmentalized. Right. So uh, seven properties of Azure Sphere. Hardware-based root of trust, again, just like we're using certificates, uh, cannot be tampered with easily, I suppose, to uh, mitigate uh, forgery and spoofing. Then we've got uh, pretty much the uh, security monitor, just like, um, as I mentioned, just every single kind of uh, pieces of the box treat each other as being unsafe. <coughs> so uh, defense in depth, so multiple layers of security equates to multiple mitigation points. Each layer ensures the layer above is secured. Uh, so uh, again, so we can mitigate the threat before it propagates. Uh, and then that was pretty much, again, uh, compartmentalization by little boxes, and again, uh, no communication between them. Um, uh, Certificate-based authentication that I went through already. Uh, renewable uh, security, so uh, we don't have to, basically, if something goes wrong, don't have to dig the road. Uh, you just need to be on OTA, both for the firmware or for your application, as uh, something um, just like happens. And then a failure reporting to be able to react to stuff. Uh, that's a nice little diagram, it's just that uh, illustrate like a real world example. It's like some dishwasher that will be running, let's say, Azure Sphere, and that would just be, uh, again, just like uh, talking to these guys uh, with end to end encryption. Uh, um, the certificate will just like ensure that those devices are genuine, so you cannot register something that is going to be uh, alien to this system. Uh, yeah, and just basically, uh, Azure Sphere would be just doing all the OTA. Um, system updates and you'll be able through uh, your uh, your policies or you, whether you use IoT Hub or anything else to push your application over the air without problems. 
So uh, to get started, you need to buy one of these guys, of course. Uh, then you will need to download and install the Azure uh, SDK. Uh, the Azure SDK is still in preview. Um, I'll show you that a bit later. Connect the device to your computer and then pretty much register your device with, uh, with the Azure portal. Uh, basically, it's simple, simple, just like one uh, tenant uh, for registering this device per subscription. Uh, then prepare the devices for debugging, so it's just a little comment to do. I just prepared all that, it's just like some Azure Sphere, uh, you've got an Azure Sphere SDK and you can run some command and that is just doing all the heavy lifting for you. And uh, then you just uh, use Visual Studio templates that are going to be coming, uh, that are going to be installed when you install the Azure Sphere SDK. So let's do a small demo, I've got five minutes for a demo. Uh, eight minutes. Eight minutes? Whoa! That's too much! I'm going to bring a celebrate with some like, hard hand water. <coughs> ah, water is good. Um, and then, so that's a demo. Cool. Let's go there. Um, uh, could do something. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, um, show you what I've been doing a bit earlier. So that is a log of what I did this morning um, at like a couple of hours ago because I did an update and I needed to redo it over. It's just what happens when you go to demo, things just like go out of control. So uh, <coughs> I did a few things. I did uh, da, 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 da. So uh, because I, I had just pretty much refreshed the um, Everything system on the device because I got a few of them. I took one that was a little bit old, so I kind of automatically updated it to the latest version. Uh, then, uh, as, so that was this command like Azure Sphere device recover. Then I did uh, show, uh, yes, uh, show that if my device is attached or not. Actually, that's a good idea to plug it so I can illustrate that at the same time. That is a wrong cable. That is a wrong cable as well. That is full of wrong cables. I will need the right cable, like that kind of cable. I'm really looking forward to the day that either no cables at all or just like one, because it's just driving me nuts, this thing. So I unplug this cable, plug this cable instead. Up, plug this device. I'm not going to put any, any hat on it because I won't have the time. So it's just like a, a micro, USB, micro USB, yes, I suppose so. Uh, and that's the right direction, yes, looks like it. It's going to go blinky. I hope it's blinky. It's, it's real. Well, and I'm going to attach that to my uh, bootcamp because I'm running on Mac and I, because of reasons. There we go. Actually, I've got already a program running. Uh, it's already running, but I will just like uh, stop it now. So I was causing like this green light to blink. So it's basically already running for real. So uh, I want to show you that. Ah, I will need to. Okay. So, uh, the problem is I'm definitely not connected to Wi-Fi yet. So is that going to be problematic? No, uh, that's okay. Um, my device has been claimed already. I did the recovery. I can show that it is attached to my computer. Yep, there we go. Uh, it's good. It's got an IP address, connection path. You need to obviously tell it to connect to the internet if you want to do something meaningful with it. Uh, and I do not have the... Oh, so we've got the... Um, Wi-Fi detail somewhere? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, I'm going to do that and uh, in real time connect it to the Wi-Fi. Excellent. It's long. Guest. Oh, he's got a guest on it? No, no, no. Come on. Do you? For real? Yes. Uh, no, I don't want that. I want, I want, I want. Uh, that thing is connected to this thing. Uh, yes. Oh, no. Like that very much. Okay, well, let's do it anyways. I'm not sure if this, uh, uh, these um, brackets are going to be working really, really well. Um, da -da -da. Da -da -da. So, um, so, what I want to do SSID is going to be a tedious uh, NUS on the enterprise. Ah, ah, no, 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 why did I do that? Okay, I didn't. Fine, PS password is going to be. No, it's not PS, it should be cookies, isn't it? Where's the PS? Cookies. Uh, add. Sorry, what? The guest without S. Ah, uh, uh, yes, uh, password. Ah, SP. Oh. No, I mean, the word, the, the SSID. SSID. Yes. Oh, uh, only one. No, that's right. NUS Enterprise. Yes. Yeah. 
with an S. That's what I wrote. Oh. You know, he's <laughs> typing somewhere. <laughs> I can't see. The, what could I do? Is there a mistake somewhere? Yes, no? Good. So we need to do something and... Okay. Okay, that's good. And I can go now to show status. Still not connected. I'm going to try another time. Otherwise it doesn't... G-U-E-S-T Not in S, it's not G-U-E-S, it's not in S No, S We move S, we move S We have S, we have S I don't understand, my brain is not working What did I do? Try it again, try it again Okay, understand? No, 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 no So it was wrong? Yeah Yes, okay Yep, he's doing something. Yes, good. We're in business. Uh, and then, and then, well, I'm connected as right. So I've got only one minute, so I'm just going to be running this application. So, uh, as you can see, this is uh, that guy's favorite language, which is just like C. Yep. So I, I don't know your name, but that's why I call you that guy. So I, I'm not being disrespectful. Uh, just so uh, the only thing we're going to be doing here. So uh, as you can see, uh, we have referenced this. Uh, things uh, that are great, uh, and then just like C is not my language of choice really. Uh, what we're going to say is so we are going to um, so sell this I out uh, general purpose port to just uh, which is just like one of those thingy there uh, to say hey cool I just want you to uh, um, we've got a timer running and we want just basically you to blink just to basically say hey uh, address this lead and tell it just like to uh, set its value to high which is going to be hey show uh, a lead and then just like stop showing it that's all it does so I'm going just to try to make that work and show you that running in real time <coughs> I, I, I can do some really cool demos with this thing but we don't have time already because I'm already minus three minutes late okay so at present the value is set to low so that should be Doing oh there we go no, I just like uh, oh. Did I? yes so it's set to low so it's not blinking and then once it's going to be set to high it's going to be green yep so again uh, I'm going to put some breakpoints here just to show them that's talking about up up so I'm just going to let it blink now it is blinking it's magic fantastic that's all that's all it does but, but that's uh, <laughs> Uh, yes, I, I, I could just write something on the LED screen and just do some uh, accelerometer uh, shenanigans, but it's going to be a bit more time consuming. Um, so yes, I think that is going just to close uh, this session because I don't have much time. I probably will be doing some uh, session on Azure Sphere if you're interested in one of these things with my, uh, the user group, uh, like the Azure uh, whatever. Uh, but definitely the middle one uh, is going to be uh, triggered at the end of November. That is going to be super, super cool. So just uh, uh, I'll just propagate it somehow. There you go. That's all for me. And now I am going to stop talking. Thank you very much. <laughs>